with many other things, doing the things as he wants, without listening to God. So the courage to sin is bad, is sin against the Holy Spirit. And therefore, we are called to be humble and be focused on our way. First and foremost, God is actually asking this question to us throughout this Lenten season. Where are you? This is the first question he has asked when Adam and Eve sinned in chapter 3 of the book of Genesis. Where are you? Because when we are sinning, God is not seeing us and we hide. Sin tries to cover us, to hide us. It is like putting on a veil to cover the face of God, the image of God which is printed on us with another cover which is sin so that God does not see you. <laughs> and God asks, where are you? And yet he is seeing you covering, taking another cover mm, on yourself. So sin covers us as if to hide from God. And this question each Christian must answer. And when somebody is becoming a Christian, must be aware of this question, where are you? And it must be daily answered. So within the 40 days, every Christian is invited to actually answer this question. And this will lead you straight to repentance. If you know where you are and you are seeing God and God is seeing you and then you are in the right place. But when God, you are not seeing God and you think you have hidden, God alone is seeing you in that cover of sin and then you are in trouble. So repentance is needed. Remove away the mask and be yourself open to God. And two, uh, God is asking us another question. Where is your brother and sister? If you are present, if you, if you say, I see God, I see you, you are conversing with God. But God will say, where is your brother? And where is your sister? How are you taking care of your brother and your sisters? Are you in position of living with them? as I am living with them, as I'm seeing them, or you are just doing your own things and then you don't want your brother, you don't want your sister, you're always at fight and you pretend to come and pray every day. You pretend that you are giving alms to people every day or every week and you pretend that you are keeping you know, the time for, uh, for your prayer or for your, you know, whatever action you want to do or for farming, for doing anything you want. And then you are not present to your brother and your sister. So God continuously asks you, where is your brother and where is your sister? Where have you positioned them in life? Where are they found in your way of action? Are they anywhere in your action? Because you are created to be for them and they for you. And where are they? So in this way, we are being asked to be in communion, to be together. Community matters. That's why family is very important. During Lenten season, we try to find our place back in the family. We have to see where is your family members? What are they doing? And what are you doing for them? So it is very important if you said I am praying but you don't know where your family is. You don't know where your brother and your sister is. There is something fundamentally wrong in your Christianity. You must find them. Finding them in the sense of 
forming a community and being with them, praying for them and being, you know, as a, a team, as a unity, trying to uh, imitate the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, who are day and night one but three. And we must be together. So Lenten season reminds us whether we are now abandoning others and we are taking our own independent way of living without others. And therefore, in this way, we are called to prayer. Are we prayerful? Yes. Prayer and fasting. Now prayer would mean that you are in the presence of God, you are seeing God. When he asks you, where are you? You say, I'm here, I'm seeing you, my God. And you sit there and converse with him. And when he says, where are your brothers? Here are my brothers and my sisters in worship with me. And you answer those questions without hesitation. And what is their place in your style of life? I respect them. I encourage them. I try to help them with this prayer. I pray for them. Mm. And then fasting means you are trying to overcome certain hurdles in your life that need the special attention of God. You said, I'm not going to eat this food, which is good. And I'm going to keep this food for my brother who is hungry, has no food. Mm. If you slaughter chicken, you say, now, this chicken I'm not going to eat. Eh? I'm going to see those in the street who will eat this chicken. Today, I have fasting. I'm going to stay hungry to think of how we humanity treat each other in a very bad way. Mm -hmm. And therefore, my hunger is not a strike. My hunger is a prayer. So that hunger should be not a strike because the world, you can refuse food on a strike <laughs> because you say, okay, I'm going to be hungry, but then you become angry. A hungry man becomes an angry man or woman. Christianity means you are going to be fasting, but loving others, welcoming others, not wearing heavy fists, but you are very hospitable in all ways. If you are selling your things, you welcome people in your life, they will not even know that you are fasting. But you keep helping and serving your people in a manner that will makes them say, I want to be a Christian. I want to be like my sister here selling. I want to be like my brother here who is at the service of people in the petrol station. So anywhere you are as a Christian, you remain uh, welcoming and ready to be with your brothers and sisters. So fasting becomes a means for you to overcome your body's need because our bodies have too many needs. And when you listen to your body, you will not listen to God. And when you don't listen to God, then you will not listen to your body well. The needs of our bodies are too many. And when we concentrate in prayer, we know that even my brother and my sister, they have the same feeling like me. And therefore, my behavior must be ordered in the manner in which God wants so that I listen to my God more than listening to my body. So you see that a Lenten season calls us to a certain way of and pattern of life and pattern of behavior. And it must not be pretentious behavior. It should be really you before you are God, walking in the presence and with your God. 
to a land of freedom, a land of grace, a, a life of grace that will welcome hum other humanities as well. And because of that, uh, Lenten season does not bar us from work and almsgiving. So the third aspect of our land is to work and also to give alms, to share what the result of your work is. Because if you have nothing to give anybody during land, that means there is something fundamental again wrong with you. We are created to be like our God, who is a worker. He created for six days. On the seventh day, he rested because of the communion, community of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They live in that community. They needed that day for themselves. And we are to do the same, especially on a Sunday. What do you do? When all of you come to pray, you have to hold each other by hand and you come to pray. And then when you come to pray, then you must see that you are welcomed into the way of life of the Christian life. Therefore, work becomes very important and resting on a Sunday becomes very important to know the path in which you are taking in your day-to-day -day life is seen only in the light of the Spirit of God. Because if you don't take it in the light of the Spirit of God, you are going to take your own path, which is very destructive to your brothers and sisters, which is very destructive to God as well. Because God will say, why should I listen to your prayer when you are quarreling and boxing each other and yet you are not eating in the name of religion. How can I listen to your prayer while you are insulting people and still you have hatred for some people during fasting and yet you have come in the church? How can I answer your prayer? We must go in that freedom of heart by our selflessness. So work becomes a way you have to work on yourself. <laughs> you begin by working on yourself and seeing that things are working. I must make an effort to move from my sinful state to God. Use the grace to move. Some will say only the grace of God is enough in my hand and then I can now do whatever I want. This is not enough. You need to also take it and say, I've got it. Now I'm going to use it. I'm going to work with it. And that is it. So work and almsgiving. Make sure that during Lenten season, you are working. What type of work are you doing? This is very important. The work must show the standard of Christianity you have reached. What is that standard you have reached? The standard is measured by the fruit of the Spirit which you are going to feed on. It is measured by, for example, love, the joy that you radiate, the love that you radiate, the peace that you radiate wherever you are, and then the trustfulness. Do you trust other people? And then the gentleness or the self-control that you have. For example, you say, I'm not drinking this time. My habit of drinking has made me waste a lot of money. I could have saved that money. I would be doing something else with that money. So this time I'm not going to drink and save the money for doing something for the family. And this needs courage, needs your work, your hard uh, stand in taking decision. 
you need patience, kindness, and goodness to radiate from you, to, pe to, to encounter other people. You need to be generous. You need to be chaste. Chaste chastity means you have your boundary in sexuality, for example. I am married, I cannot take another woman or man in my life. That is chastity. And a priest or a religious said, I have vowed not to get married, I will never enter into marriage relationship with any woman, any man, because that is my vow I have made with the Lord. And these things are very impertinent. You, we try to show them during the Lenten season as we are moving. The faithfulness, faithfulness that we radiate, these are the fruit of the Spirit that we want to feed our children on. We want to feed ourselves on. We want to, to radiate this to our surrounding so that we make a meaningful uh, uh, Lenten season, Quaresima, or 40 days. At the end of these 40 days, I am supposed to encounter the living God and be with him permanently in my life. And there is only one enemy that we fight. No human being is an enemy. No human person is an enemy. But many human persons are possessed by the one enemy whom we call Satan. And, but the, the main thing that we must do is to see that the capital sin that Satan used to fight us, that is where we must be very attentive. Be watchful. Jesus emphasized this every time. Please be watchful. The Satan is prowling like a lion to devour you. And he's using all type of, you know, tactics to devour you. And especially the sin, the capital sin of pride. Pride has so many nuances inside. If somebody is proud, it is difficult for you to be humble before God and to answer the question, where are you? You will say, I don't know. And then you say, where are your brothers and sisters? And then you will say, am I the shepherd of my brothers and sisters? You become very sarcastic. That is the sign of pride. But this pride is a really deep-seated sin in most of us humanity. If you don't know it, it may grow into a deadly you know, journey that you will never come out. And then greed and pride. Hmm? Greed adds to pride. And then envy adds to pride. These are all capital sins that we, we take for granted. But during the Lenten season, we must see where I, am I deep-seated. Hmm? So pride, greed, envy, and then wrath. Hmm? The curse. Every time you are cursing people and so on and that kind of life. And then you, the last. Every time you look at the opposite sex as in a lustful way. That means you are possessed by uh, the sin of lust. You can't but help yourself. And then you have the gluttony, the food you must be satisfied fast. Some people even bar their own children. They said, first I must eat. After I've get inside, then you call the children, you come and eat. And then the woman even eats after the children. That is a gluttony. Why should you be satisfied first? What about them? You should eat together and share. 
And then laziness. You are lying there every time. Eh? You are tired. Eh? Sometimes you have danced the whole night. You waste the whole day uh, lying down, brooding laziness into your life. Actually, we are supposed to be sleeping in the way nature dictates. By seven, eight, we should be in bed, not just roaming around. <laughs> we eat our supper. If it were by seven, people should be taking supper. And then by eight, nine, we are in bed. And then by five, you are awake hmm? in prayer. And then by six, you are out going to the place of work. That should have been the pattern. But we keep on extending this. And then you end up not sleeping. You are disgruntled. You find your body is not healthy, is not ready to reason is not ready to cooperate, to do certain amount of work timely in order to be, to have achievement. And we punish our bodies because we give them less rest, less sleep. Imagine some people, somebody is playing music, loud music, you are shouting and drunkenness the whole night. And then how do you work the following day? You have deprived your body from that rest. And during Lenten season, all our Christian brothers and so on who stage discos and do stage these dances and so on, which bar people from, you know, rest, should try to decease from it and try to help people to think about their life. Life is greater than the money we might get if we can save that life. And therefore, we have chosen the theme of repentance, prayer, and work, as it is in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Jesus is concerned about us, about this journey, this journey of faith. And let us therefore uh, try to work together, because it is not enough to carry out the cross during Good Friday and then parade around that we are Christians, but you have never followed anything during the 40 days. And you have remained recalcitrant or hard. You cannot change your ways. And then on that day you are carrying the cross or you are moving in the way of the cross. It doesn't make sense because that day you must say that I have died with you. I have left away all the drinking joints which I used to enjoy. So I take my small cross and move after the big cross. That is, it makes sense there. And you have done it willfully, joyfully, and peacefully. And then you, you can say, I have left being walk, for example. I have not been a walk on a toro. So I've left that way. Now I've started a new way of life. And then that day of when we are marching as Christians in the city here with the cross, that's a sign of victory. You have cooperated with the word of God in that journey. And then somebody said, I've never been praying. So at least in 40 days, I have developed a pattern of prayer in my family. We have been eating together in my family. Therefore, it is a sign of victory when we carry the cross around and move. And this becomes, Easter becomes a celebration because Easter means uh, actually taking away the sin that the world has imposed on us, liberation of from the sins of the world and we have reached the promised land we are independent thinkers from what the world is imposing on us so with this i would like to ask all our christian brothers and sisters let us move together let us pray to our lord and i ask all the non-christians 
to cooperate with us in this great moment of prayer, especially the Muslim brothers and sisters with whom we always hold hands in this journey of fasting, as they do fasting as well. And we greet all of you and wishing you all a safe uh, and a very fruitful uh, Lenten season for everybody in this region. Thank you very much.